absolutely. And I know a lot of people, they saw that Supreme Court decision yesterday, and I could see people becoming dispirited and disheartened. And that that is actually the purpose behind the witchcraft media is to dispirit you, is to make you think, well, I, I you know, our country's lost and all of this stuff. And uh, while we're not ultimately tied into any political system, it can be discouraging. And it, it's not, not discouraging necessarily, but it it's saddening, you know, it's grievous to me uh, yeah. to see what's happened to America, to see what's happened to the country that we love, and to know that on the heels of all of this, if this, if it finally goes through, is going to be much suffering. So I, I'm, I'm, it makes me angry when I see people casually approaching this so casually, as if, you know, just flippantly with, with phrases like, well, the early church, you know, thrived under Nero and all of this stuff. And they did. And they did. But that doesn't mean that people didn't suffer. And so I, I think that a, a loving response, the right response is to not want people to suffer, to not want people to be killed, to not want people to have their kids jacked up with same sex, you know, estrogen or testosterone or whatever, you know, all of the evil. I mean, I think that is the righteous response. So yeah. Uh, anyway, revival and like we've said before, is going to come. Now, I, I don't think it has to come necessarily the hardest way, you know, but it's going to come. But yeah. But what I was what I was touching on there was, you know, you you saw this parallel between uh, Trump. You know, you said that pastors that that. How did you put it? What was the title of your video? Um, I just released a video this morning that actually I filmed last week, but I mean. I was behind on production, so I finally got it out uh, this morning. But I said that pastors who throw out Trump would probably throw out revival too. Yeah. And I said, here's why. And my premise was that many times, at least from my observation, you know, in the last, you know, 10, 20 years or so, um, a pastor that just throws out revival, rejects revival altogether, it's usually because of what they see in terms of the flesh manifesting, right? And we use the example of like Toronto you know, the Toronto blessing, you know, even Brownsville at times, the spirit of God would hit and people's flesh would manifest. Or maybe there's people that are in the revival that just got saved and they're immature and they don't know how to, you know, do all things decently in order, you know, like Paul said in 1 Corinthians 14, 40, right? Um, but like, we have to be really careful because we can be so, you know, honed in on, oh, that's the flesh. Or, oh, that's man. That's not God. And we can miss God moving in the midst of it. And I always say it like this, Eric, Acts chapter two, whenever Peter was quoting, you know, the prophet Joel, Joel, um, you know, from the Old Testament, he said that when the spirit of God would be poured out, he would pour it out on all flesh. He didn't say he would pour it out on all the sanctified ones, you know, on all the ones who were ready to handle it maturely. So when we look for a move of God, there's going to be flesh in it. Okay. There's going to be carnality in it. Um, but we have to be mature leaders and people, you know, of discernment that can see what God is doing and partner with that. Um, but another thing that I addressed in that video, Eric, was, uh, you know, people really have a moral sort of conundrum with this because they feel like if they support Trump, th then they support all of his bad behavior as well as his good policies, right? They feel like there's no, you know, separating that out. And I said that, you know, I empathize with this because I'm in ministry. You and I are in ministry, Eric, and we have to make these decisions all the time. Like, okay, if I do a meeting with that person or if I have that person on my broadcast, am I endorsing everything they teach, right? You know, so it, it's not an easy thing. So I also called for grace to be given, you know, to people. And ultimately, at the end of the day, Eric, we have to walk out our own salvation daily with fear and trembling, you know, and, and move according to our convictions, you know, th the best we can. Me, I have a conviction that I need to support Trump wholeheartedly right now because he represents so much, okay, not just for the church and the evangelical community, but for the nation and the whole world. I mean, he is standing just like that. That priest said in that letter that went viral, you know, a few months ago, that priest from the, from the Vatican, he said, like, President Trump, you are standing in the way of globalism, of like this antichrist spirit that's reaching out and, and trying to expand its dominion in, in a greater way right now. And whether you like it or not, that's the truth, you know? Yeah. Amen. Uh, here's the connection I was making, and we talked about some of this a few minutes ago, is, you know, revivals generally come with a stigma. Not, not every single revival, but many revivals came with a stigma. 
Uh, you go all the way back to the Great Awakening, you know, where people were getting slain in the spirit. And then, of course, tongues with Pentecost. And the early Pentecostals were very stigmatized. Many of the early Pentecostals came from, uh, you know, backwoods type places. They weren't the, 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 the elites of society mm -hmm. and all of this. And, uh, you know, Trump is kind of like that. You know, Trump carries a stigma. And I feel like that's the principle Anyway, when I just saw the title of your video, I feel like that's the principle, you know, that people fail to see that God often sends things with a stigma and you just accept it or you reject it because but he, he does that for a reason. And the reason is he wants to test our hearts to see if what we really hold valuable, what's really valuable to us. And oftentimes what my observation with people who reject Trump I'm talking about conservatives and Christians or people that, that try to quibble with Trump or God's use of Trump. My observation is that many of these people, uh, and we don't know people's hearts, but we, we can judge uh, when we see a lot of people doing the same thing. I think it's just wise to judge that. Uh, yeah. My observation is that a lot of these people hold their reputation as more valuable than God's purposes. And yeah. if in revival, will test that every single time. If we care about our reputation, sure. if we care about being understood by people, like we just talked about, you know, yeah. before Stephen and I got on here, we talked about, you know, we don't like it, <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, people are probably going to lump us in with some of the kind of extreme uh, MAGA, what do you call it, dominionist, seven mountain kind of, kind of stuff and teachings wow. that we have been talk, you know, spoken out against. And it is what it is, you know, you know, I, I think I remember hearing Paul Cain, a, a sermon that he preached several, you know, well, many years ago now, he went over the stigmas of the anointing. And I, I think that he said one of the stigmas of the anointing is the stigma of being misunderstood or something like the stigma of being misunderstood and being unable to defend yourself. Yeah. And God will test all of us with that. We're never, you know, if, if we're lumped in with the wrong crowd, if we're, if we're unfairly uh, seen in an unfair light or all of that stuff, you know, that's just part of, that's basic Christianity. That's basic yeah. taking up your cross. We're well, never going to be understood. We're yeah. never, you know, ultimately we have to leave all of that in the hands of God and just do what's right and accept the way God does things because it's God and because he's the one who determines these things. And we just say, yes. I see it as a part of the cross, as a part of taking up our cross. Jesus yeah. was, was misrepresented and he was misunderstood. And um, he didn't try to defend himself. He didn't try to set the record straight with people and say, no, you got the wrong idea about, about me. Here's, here's what I'm really about, right? But it's almost like, Eric, so much of our ministries, public ministries nowadays, they're so influenced by the way people in the world do public life, do political life. And like people in the world, like if you're a celebrity in Hollywood or you're a politician, well, you're going to hire a PR firm and you're going to try to spin things a certain way. You're going to try to control the narrative that's out there about you in the public eye. But in my mind, that's just not the way servants of the Lord and ministers of the gospel should operate. We should move according to our convictions. We should speak truth. Okay, we should move according to the way that the spirit of God is moving on our hearts to move. And we should let it land the way it lands. I mean, God, the Holy Spirit is the greatest PR firm. Trust me. <laughs> The Holy Spirit will have his way. And, you know, another scripture I'm always quoting, a beautiful scripture, Romans 8, I believe it's um, uh, 30. It says, you know, God will work all things together for our good, right? So I even believe if there is a negative stigma uh, that somehow attaches to me or whatever, you know, that God's going to use that, you know, all, all going to work it all together for my good, you know. But I think, Eric, you, you get into real trouble when you start thinking first oh, how is this going to look? How is this going to sound? How is this going to make me look? You get into real trouble with that. That's where yeah. real compromise enters in. And it would appear that there's some leaders in the body of Christ um, that that's entered into their minds, uh, you know, during this whole, you know, period of, of the Trump testing. It's been real testing. Yes, you know? I think that is the real Trump test, is that, that will we support somebody who's such a mess in many ways, and yet the anointing of God seems to be apparent on him. And, yeah. I, you know, as you're talking about all that, my, mm -hmm. in my spirit, what I feel is, dear Lord God, we need to go back to at least to where the early Pentecostals were. 
<laughs> they didn't care about their reputation. You know, everybody says, oh, Zusa Street, you know, but we're so busy branding everything. Uh, you, you can't brand that stuff. You can't brand the fire of the Holy Spirit. You can't brand desperation. Uh, you can't market this. And we are, we are so consumed with marketing something and having even this apostolic network, all of this stuff and all this apostolic movement. So yeah. much of it is marketing and organization and, you know, like marketing revival. And it, it's sickening to me. It's so sickening to me. If we really want a move of God, we will, we will smell that spirit and have nothing to do with it because it's so antithetical to walk to the holiness of God and to walking in the spirit that's that, you know, loving yes. our lives, lo caring about how we look and all of this stuff. Goodness, we need that stuff burned out of our life post haste. Right. And I'm not against using wisdom. I mean, the Holy spirit, one of his titles is the spirit of wisdom. So God does give wisdom. Okay. At times for certain things. Um, but I, I just believe that, um, you know, we need to stay pure in our hearts right now you know, as leaders, especially in the prophetic. And um, there can be no greater purity of heart than someone just spends time with the Lord and just moves with the spirit as they feel, you know, the spirit leading them. I mean, that's a pure thing. And uh, that's faith. You know, that's basically what faith is. Childlike faith is we spend time with the Lord and we allow the Lord to move us and we step out and we do what we feel is right according to our convictions, according to how the spirit of God's leading us. And also what God has built in us through meditating the word, okay, and, and just being emaciated in, in, in God's word. Hey, Stephen Powell here with Line of Light Ministries. I want to thank you for watching this video, and I want to ask you to consider today sowing a tax-deductible gift into our ministry. We, we can't continue to do what we're doing without your generous and faithful support. We're here to serve you, and we're here to serve the Lord, and we want to see the prophetic voice amplified in the earth through stewarding the prophetic and also uh, through teaching out of God's word. So if you identify with our mission, if you've been blessed and engaged with what we're doing, then consider helping us continue to take that step and further the gospel, further God's word, and amplify that prophetic voice in the earth through this ministry. Just go ahead and click one of the links in the description of this video, and you can give securely right now to help us in what we're doing. God bless.